everyone and welcome to another software session where we'll be teaching you how to access Forms for Excel to create an online form to share with others and collect responses. Now the objectives of this video include creating your own survey, adding fields, managing questions and sharing which includes obtaining responses. Each objective is listed in the comments with a clickable link that will allow you to jump directly to that section. Let's get started with a quick introduction on what exactly you can do with Forms for Excel. Forms for Excel allows users to create an online form that when submitted will add the information to an Excel spreadsheet and this is saved in OneDrive. If you ever have to send out emails seeking information or answers from a group of people you can understand the frustration with multiple replies. Forms for Excel solves that problem. Now, please note that personally identifiable information, PII, can never be collected using an Excel form. Examples of PII include social security numbers, dates of birth, driver's license, financial information, and more. We encourage you to watch our other video on handling confidential data to learn more about this important topic. If you have a need to collect data that contains personally identifiable information, you will need OTS to create and manage the form for you. If you will not be collecting personally identifiable information, you can proceed with this video. Now that we know what Forms for Excel is used for, let's begin creating a new form. The example we'll use in this video will be for a survey. First, log into Office 365 by heading to office.towson.edu and logging in with your net ID and password. Next, you'll click the OneDrive tile located on the home screen. OneDrive will open. Here, you'll head to the Files page and click the drop-down menu labeled New. You'll select Forms for Excel and the Forms for Excel window will appear. Give your form a name in the text box and then click the Create button. A new browser tab will open and the Forms app will appear. With the Forms app open, our form can start taking shape. Let's go over how to modify a title and add a description to your form. The form title takes its name from the name provided in the previous step. However, if you want to change that, click on the form name. Here you can type in a new name for your form. Hit the tab key and you'll be brought to the description field. Now this field is helpful to provide instructions or to describe the form's purpose. You could even add a disclaimer or privacy policy stating that you will not collect PII. Let's add some questions to our form so we can collect the right type of data. There are six types of questions that you can choose from. Choice, text, rating, date, ranking and like it. Let's explore each question type and use them in our survey. The first type of question is a choice question. Choice is for questions that require an answer from a pre-selected set of responses. To add a choice question, click the plus add question button and then select choice. The question field appears. This is where you'll enter your question. Take note that this will be the header of the column in your Excel spreadsheet. Below the question are a series of options. Click in the option field and replace the text with your desired choices. To add additional options, click the Add Option button. Additionally, you can also add an Other category. If you wish people to select more than one choice, toggle the Multiple Answers toggle instead. The next type of question is a text question. Text is for questions that require a text answer. Click the Add Question button and choose Text. If you desire a longer response, toggle the long answer toggle and more space will be provided. A rating question enables a rating from 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 in either stars or numbers. Click the Add Question button and choose Rating. Type in your question. You can change the levels and the symbol using the drop down arrows below the question. Date is for questions requiring a date answer. Click the Add Question button and choose Date. There are no options associated with this question type. There are two additional question types available to you, Ranking and Like It. They're hidden. Let's discover them and learn what they can do for you. Ranking enables the order of predefined options to be rearranged in order of preference. 
This is valuable if you're looking for a general consensus on a list of choices. Click the Add Question button and navigate to the More icon. Select Ranking from the drop-down. This is similar to Choice but allows users to drag and drop sections in order of preference. The final question type is Likert. This is for questions that offer a range of answer options. Click the Add Question button and navigate to the More icon. Select Like It from the drop-down. You have probably seen this type of question in other surveys you've completed. It's a complex question allowing people to choose how they feel about different statements. Click on an Option 1 to change the wording. Repeat the process for the remaining options. If you don't want an option, you can click the trash can to remove it. Similarly, click on Statement 1 to type in a statement. Repeat the process for all remaining statements. In both instances, you can click the plus button to add additional options and statements. By now, you see our form take shape and we've explored the different question types. There's a few more things that we can do to this form to help aid the end user. Subtitles allow you to add additional information pertaining to the question such as specific instructions. The subtitle field can be turned on by clicking on the More Options button at the bottom right hand corner of the question and then clicking on Subtitle. To insert media such as pictures, head to the right of the question text field and find the Insert Media button. Clicking on this button will open up the Insert Media pane which will give you the option of a picture or video. Now you can choose any picture or video from either searching online, looking in your OneDrive, or uploading it from your computer. Finally, besides the More Options button, is a required toggle. Enabling this required option will require the person filling out the form to answer that question. If they do not provide an answer, the Submit button at the end of the form will be disabled until they do. Now that we have our questions in place and set with appropriate subtitles and media, let's go over how to manage the questions by copying, deleting, and reordering them to our liking. First, head to the Questions tab and click on the question that you want to manage. A small menu will appear above the question on the right side. To copy the question, click on the Copy Question icon in the menu. The question will be duplicated above the current question. To delete a question, click on the Delete Question icon in the menu. The question will then be deleted. To reorder your questions, click on the Move Up or Move Down arrows to rearrange the order. Our form is now complete and it's time to share it with other users. There are multiple ways that you can share your survey, including using a link, a QR code, embedding the survey, and finally by using email. Here's how to do just that. To share your survey, click the Share button in the upper right hand corner of the form screen. The Share pane will open and will ask if you want to send and collect responses to anyone with the link or only people in my organization. Choose only people in my organization to allow anyone with a Towson University email address to access the form. Next, select from the four options of Link, QR, Embed, or Email. Link will allow a link to be generated in a text box that you can copy and paste into an email, document, or etc. QR allows a QR code to be generated and that allows the person to scan the code with their smartphone or a tablet to access the form. Embed gives you an embed code of your survey that you can copy and paste into a website and clicking Email will automatically open a new email in Outlook containing the form's link. Our form has now been sent to users. They will complete the form and responses will now be available to view. There are two ways that you can view responses. You can access the responses through Office 365 or you can view the Excel workbook that was created when you created Forms for Excel. To view responses in Office 365, head to the Forms app in Office 365 and then open the form you created. Click on the Responses tab for your form. Here you can scroll down to view response details for each specific question. 
Click the More Details link beneath the question to view a list of responses by participant for that particular question. To view these questions in Excel, head to the form that you wish to view and click on the Responses tab. On the bottom right hand corner is a button labeled Open in Excel. Click this to open up a workbook in Excel and all of your survey's responses will appear. And that's it folks, you're now able to create your own form for Excel and collect data without the hassle of collecting data manually via email and entering into Excel yourself. I'd like to know what your favorite part of this Forms for Excel workshop was. Please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions or ideas for future software sessions, please send us an email at training at Towson.edu. What we'll do is we'll get back to you and we'll try and add that software session to our roster. Until next time, make it a great day. We really hope you like this video. We have so much fun putting them together and we make videos like this all the time. I want to encourage you to get in on the action by clicking the subscribe button and then the bell icon to be notified when a new video hits. Now, if you have a comment about this video, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and we'll get back to you.